Welcome to the ProMax Quad OA VIN Assessment Tool Demonstration. Today we will look at a new tool designed for fast, simple, and straightforward analysis of closed vent systems. This analysis is designed to satisfy some of the requirements in NSPS Quad OA. In order to determine whether vent systems from atmospheric tanks are of adequate design, we must first determine the peak flow through our facility. We generally talk about flow through a facility in average daily production, what we will call nominal flow. However, the actual flow through the facility is typically not constant, with level control valves opening and closing at different intervals. When we speak of peak flow, we are talking about the maximum flow rate the vent system may experience during normal operation. Generally, this value is going to be greater than the vapors produced from nominal flow. To begin using the tool, we first start with a solved, steady-state simulation of the facility in Promax. This may be the same file used when either applying for a permit or during reporting. The important things are that the model is solved and that it has the most up-to-date information on the facility, including compositions, temperatures, pressures, and flows. With the Promax file open, we can move to the new Quad OA Vent Assessment Tool. This tool is at present a VBA application that runs through Excel. We are delivering this tool as an Excel template or XLTM file, and our customers can download the tool for free from our website. The tool has four tabs. The first tab is the Identification tab. Here we will input identifying information about both the well site and the engineer performing the certification. This includes the owner operator, the facility name, the facility code, county, and the state. Information about the engineer is also input. Once the identification tab has been populated, we can move to the calculation tab. We can go there either by clicking on the calculation tab itself or clicking the next button. The calculation tab is where we will provide the vent system configuration the pipe lengths and diameters, additional pressure drop, and the method of calculating peak flow. The first step is to provide the vent system configuration. In the case of Brown Bear 1H, there are three tanks present at the facility. Fluids from the facility feed only to the first tank, the other two being for overflow. In the diagram, each tank can have one of three states. A green tank is a tank that is both present and in use. By in use, we mean that it directly receives fluids from the production facility. Left clicking on a tank changes its state. The next state is a tank that does not exist. This is essentially removing that tank from the diagram and calculation. A gray tank is a tank that is present at the facility, but not in use. This means it does not directly receive fluids from the well. Note that as the state of tanks change, the availability of pipe definitions also changes. In the section below the vent system configuration, the user must input the various pipe diameters, lengths, and numbers of fittings. Each pipe corresponds to a numbered line in the diagram. Only the required fields for the given tank battery configuration are available. To set the vent system configuration to match the facility Brown Bear 1H, tanks 1 and 5 through 8 must be disabled. Tanks 3 and 4 must also be set to present, but not in use. Note that the tanks can be renamed to better match the facility. At Brown Bear 1H, the vent system is entirely 3 inches in diameter, and the horizontal run between the tanks is 2 feet above the tank roofs. This means that pipes 2, 3, and 4 all have a 3 inch diameter and a 2 foot length. Each also has two fittings. The total number of fittings, regardless of type, should be counted and placed in the number of fittings field. All fittings will be treated as a T used as an elbow, which has an equivalent length of 60 diameters. If desired, the number of fittings may be adjusted to provide more or less equivalent length for a given pipe. Pot 9 represents the horizontal run between tanks 101 and 102. It has a length of 16 feet and contains 6 fittings. The same is true for pipe 10. 
Pipe 11 and 15 represent the lines leaving the tank battery and carrying the vapors to the control device. For this system, pipe 11 has a length of 20 feet and 6 fittings. Pipe 15 has a length of 50 feet and has 8 fittings. Once the configuration and pipe information have been provided, the means of calculating the peak flow of vapor through the system must be specified. This begins by selecting the PROMAX file that contains the production facility model. Next is the selection of the appropriate flow sheet. The stream representing the fluids entering the tank battery must also be selected. For this facility, the stream name is Tank Inlet. Once the stream entering the tank battery is identified, the flow basis must be selected. The flow basis is the selected method used for calculating peak flow. If controlling valve is selected, then the peak liquid flow for the facility will be calculated based on a user-supplied flow coefficient as well as conditions around the selected valve, such as fluid properties and pressure drop. The selected valve must satisfy two conditions. It must be a controlling valve and its flow coefficient must be known. Another possible selection is simulation, which will use flow rates directly from the PROMAX file. User input liquid and user input vapor allow the users to directly set either condition. Please note that regardless of the flow basis selected, the peak flow used in the calculation will be a product of the flow rate as determined by the flow basis method and the flow multiplier. For example, if the flow basis simulation is used, the specified liquid and vapor flows will be set to the nominal flows in the PROMAX file. Note that even though nominal flows are used, the specified vapor flow is slightly greater than nominal. This is due to displacement of vapor in the tank by the liquid feed. If the flow multiplier is set to 1.5, the peak flow will be 50% greater than what is shown in the specified flow. The peak flow used in the pressure drop calculation is shown in the Excel report as well as the certification tab, both of which will be seen later. Along with the method of calculating flow, a flow correlation must be selected. This is used to determine the pressure drop in the vent lines. There are three correlations to choose from. A selection of maximum will run all three correlations and will select the one that provides the greatest pressure drop. Once the flow basis has been selected, tank conditions must be provided. These conditions represent the maximum temperature the tank may experience and the atmospheric pressure at the facility. The relief pressure is the lowest set point pressure of any device at the top of the tank. At present, the default 4 ounces is being used. The control device pressure drop represents the total pressure drop expected at the end of pipe 15. This includes the control device itself, along with any other equipment, such as detonation arresters or scrubbers. Elevation change represents the difference in height from the roof of the tank to the control device outlet. If, for example, there was a 15-foot high tank, with a 25-foot flare, the elevation change would be 10 feet. On the other hand, if the tank was 15 feet high and an enclosed combustor was 5 feet from grade, the elevation change would be negative 10. The collected liquid height is the height of any liquid that may be expected to accumulate in low points in the system. If there are no low points or if no liquid is expected to accumulate, this value may be set to zero. Once all of the calculation tab information is provided, the Calculate button may be clicked to generate the Excel report. Along with the report, information about the flow and pressure in each line is provided in the tool dialog. The report provides much of the same information from the dialog. In addition, under Calculated Flows, we can see both the nominal flow from the simulation and the peak vapor flow used in the calculation. Keep in mind that the peak vapor flow includes both the flow multiplier and displacement from liquids entering the tank. Note that the pressure for tank TK101 is flagged in red, 
due to the tank pressure exceeding the set point pressure of 4 ounces. This means the system is undersized and is in a fail state. Upgrading pipe 15 from 3 inches to 4 inches will reduce the tank pressure to below 4 ounces and bring the system to a pass state. Once the calculation is complete, we may move to the certification tab, either by clicking on it directly or by clicking the next button. The certification tab includes the language from EPA guidance on the minimum design elements that must be considered when certifying the event system. If appropriate, each checkbox should be checked showing that each design element has been considered and is understood. Once all four boxes have been checked, and if the simulation or calculation is in a pass state, a certification report may be printed. The report has three pages. The first is the certification page, stating all of the identification information we have provided. The exact required language from the quad away rule is provided, along with a signature line and space for affixing an engineering seal. The second page contains the assessment report, showing all of the flows, configurations, assumptions, and calculations used to ensure the vent system is adequately designed. The third page contains descriptions of each of the parameters on page two of the report. That's the end of the Quad OA Vent Assessment Tool demonstration. We hope that this tool helps you if Quad OA compliance is in your future. As always, BRNE's technical support staff stands ready to help you however we can. If you have questions, need assistance using the tool, or need any other help, do not hesitate to contact us at 979-776-5220 or at support at BRE.com. Thank you.